The original Mafia game is known for two things. First, it's known for being this PS2 era GTA clone with a ton of heart. This game really digs deep to tell the tale of how a man named Tommy Angelo was initiated into the Salieri family of gangsters in the 1930s. Like every good American gangster story, life in the family ain't all money, booze, and glamour. The gangster lifestyle takes its toll on Tommy over his years of service, and it all comes to a head as he spills the beans to a cop to try and put away the Salieri crime family for good. The other thing this game is infamously known for is that patience destroying car racing mission. It was a huge pain for people to beat back in the day and it's all thanks to wonky car physics and brutal AI. That mission along with the rest of the game is back in the definitive edition remade from the ground up and word of mouth has reached my ears about this game having a difficult platinum thanks to this one infamous race. Can one mission really sway this game's difficulty that drastically, to the point that it's stopping people from getting the Platinum Trophy? Or is there other factors at play here? I am so happy to get the chance to talk about the Mafia series here on Platinum Hunters, so let's pull out our Tommy guns and get ready for the heist to rob the original Gangster Platinum Trophy. This is Platinum Hunters, the show where we take a look at everything it takes to get the Platinum Trophy and whether it's worth the effort to achieve it. Before we start this heist, don't forget to subscribe to be initiated into the Platinum Hunters crime family for more Platinum Trophy guides just like this one. You might just steal or con your next Platinum Trophy. In terms of the conversation around this game's difficulty, and therefore the Platinum Run's difficulty, I really disagree with the consensus on this one. Many people have given the Platinum Run 6s and 7s, and I just don't think the game is that difficult to clear. Yes, I hear you, the Chapter 5 race is hard as balls, and you have to contend with crappy car physics and really fast opponents. And yes, there is a handful of missions where the shootouts can be tough without regenerating health to aid you. But I feel that all of this has been made overblown, and the game is much easier than it's being made out to be. The Platinum Run itself is incredibly simple. Beat the game on its hardest difficulty, grab all the collectibles in free roam, and then do a few easy miscellaneous trophies and that's it. It's that simple. The game's difficulty comes from the raw challenge of classic mode, and I'm going to give you all the tips and tricks so that you pack enough heat to make this difficulty mode swim with the fishes. More helpful resources are in the description below. For the classic difficulty mode and the trophy, Made Man, you are at a disadvantage with health that doesn't regenerate, but it's made up for with the snappy aim assist that laser locks onto any enemy so long as the reticle is in the vicinity of the enemy. Cover is the name of the game, and you can pop in and out of cover and blind fire to take down most foes. In many of the game shootouts, I could reduce the number of targets just by choosing a cover spot and popping in and out of that spot letting the aim assist do all the work. Plus, when your health is critical, it does in fact have a bit of regeneration. Small, but enough to bring you to a state where you won't get iced in one shot. Do not engage until that little health boost has kicked in. From a combat perspective, I think the Uncharted games on crushing are much more punishing than this. You just need to utilize cover effectively and it will make everything much easier. Did I mention I have an Uncharted 4 guide that I just dropped last week? In a few chapters, there are some driving missions that task you to get from point A to point B in a certain time limit. Or there will be missions where you have to chase down these targets while driving. They are certainly annoying to beat, but the main recommended path is always enough to beat these. If you think you can navigate it faster, experiment a bit, but the highlight route is usually the fastest way to point B. Dealing with some less than stellar car physics can be rough sure, but you will get used to them as you play on. Plus, some of these missions will let you use a car from your garage, and if you have bought Mafia 2 and Mafia 3, you will instantly have access to the Schubert Frigate from Mafia 2 and the iconic 
Samson Drifter from Mafia 3. These cars are fast, and you can use them on the missions where you have access to your garage. And now for the most important part of the guide. When it comes to the race in Chapter 5 and the trophy, Supercharged, yeah, it's difficult and made me spend about 3 hours trying to clear it. I play a lot of simulation racers, like Gran Turismo and Forza, and even I still had a tough time with it. The best I can do is give you all the tips you're gonna need to know, and then you have to go out and grind it out. Car physics are honestly gonna be your greatest foe out on the track. If you are taking the long straightaways at full speed, do not try to slow yourself down by holding down on the brake button. That will make you lock the brakes up and lose control of the car entirely in almost every case. You need to tap the brake to slow you down, which means you will need to think about slowing down well before you arrive at the turn. If that allows an opponent to creep up on you, so be it. You need to make each of these turns without spinning out or going off the road to have any chance of winning. Some less sharp turns will allow you to plow through them at the speed you're going at, like these two raised road sections right here. Others, you'll need to flutter the brake to maintain a safe speed enough to make the turn. This chicane right here looks like you'll need to slow down, but you can actually hit the turn at a certain angle and plow right through it. I don't recommend it if you're in first, because it's a bit iffy, but to make time while you're behind, go for it. There are certainly a few ways you can take advantage of the AI to assure a victory. Off of the very first turn, you have a chance to pass a whole bunch of racers in the chaos that ensues as a result of everyone trying to make that first turn. Always try to get in on the inside of everyone, and if you have to be aggressive and give them a bump, that's how it is. If you mess up on this turn, there are not many consequences. It's the beginning of the race and you can just restart if anything goes wrong. Give yourself the biggest advantage going into the rest of the race. One thing you can always count on is that when taking this bend right here, one of the AI in front of you is going to lose control and crash on every lap. That's going to give you a free position, so factor that into your run. As well, sometimes the AI racers will give you a break by either crashing into each other or running themselves off the road. This is another great advantage when it does appear. Once the AI drivers are behind you, I've noticed they will be less hesitant to pass you, except in a few cases. One of them is right after the raised road section before the finish line. They are guaranteed to be coming out of that section faster than you are, and if you are not careful, they could pass you at the very end. Move the camera to check behind you while you're going straight, and if you see them hauling ass behind you, position yourself right in front of them. This is especially important when you are in the final stretch of the race, in first place, and heading for the finish line. Then, the rest of the race is left to chance, as sometimes the AI just won't be kind to you. A good start and AI racing poorly might just come down to being lucky. Sometimes your race will just be a result of the stars aligning and everything happening good during those three laps. This whole race will feel like a Herculean feat, but you can do it if you take all of these tips into consideration. I've been showing you my footage of all of this, but I'm going to leave other people's runs down in the description below for extra help. Good luck. And with all of that said, if you're finding all of this too difficult for your first attempt at the game, do an extra playthrough on a lower difficulty to get the hang of things. You will get the trophy, A Life of Crime, for beating the game on easy, medium, or hard. You will also get this retroactively if you play on classic mode. You will also get a trophy for completing each chapter for the first time. There are 20 chapters, so you will get 20 trophies as you go. Not going to list them to avoid any spoilers. But there is one more story related trophy and it comes at the end of chapter 5 after that dreaded race. Instead of driving to your destination, take Polly to the strip club. Instead locate it on this part of the map. Park in the correct spot to pop the trophy. What a way to celebrate that race. While you're causing crime in story mode, there are a bunch of trophies you can get or if you miss them, you can just hop into free roam and get them there. These first two trophies are a result of the decision you're gonna make when you get pulled over by the coppers. You will get lined pockets if you flash some cash and pay the fine. Or you can have some fun and resist arrest, getting the trophy not taken in. If you build up your wanted rating to 5 stars, then you'll have a chance to get the trophy heat from the cops. 
and you will have to successfully get away from the onslaught of feds coming after you. Chapter 17 will have a set piece where you will be instantly at 5 stars wanna rating and then from there all you have to do is just get away. When your heat has dropped, work on getting car enthusiasts by lockpicking 5 cars. An easy one to get by just walking up to a car and getting into it. In particular, lockpick or find a car called the Bolt Ace for the trophy that motor can move. You will need to get this clunker to 50 miles per hour, which is actually a lot harder than it sounds considering cars are much slower in the 1930s, especially this one. You will have to find a long street and then gun it to get the trophy. The last one requires you to find a motorcycle for the trophy Stunt Rider, where you will need it to pop a wheelie and hold it for 3 seconds or more. There's only one kind in the game, but you can find them frequently in free roam mode and you just have to swipe one then drive and hold back on the left analog stick. That will take care of those trophies and now all we have to focus on is the game's many collectibles. There are tons of collectibles in Lost Heaven and the thing about this game is that there are collectibles exclusive to the story mode chapters and then the rest are found in the free roam mode where you'll explore the amazing looking city at your own leisure. For the trophy, the whole story, you need to find all the collectibles except the wanted posters. Thank god because there are a lot of these wanted posters to find. One for every team member that worked on the game and five lucky people who won a contest to have their mugshot added to the game. Damn, that's cool. You can check your progress in your collection in the pause menu. Let's start with the story mode stuff, and here is the list of stuff exclusive to story mode. You will find all 20 Dime Detective Pulp magazines, which will also net you the Pulp Fiction trophy for your very first Pulp magazine. Seven of the 20 Super Science stories, five of the 20 Terror Tales, 4 of the 10 Gangster Monthly Issues, which awards you the trophy Comic Violence for the first one, 17 of the 22 Cigarette Cards, also netting you the trophy Family History for the first one, and lastly, 5 of the 50 Mystery Foxes, again, awarding you the Mystery Fox Discovered trophy for finding the first one. That makes a grand total of 58 collectibles just in the story mode, and I have a guide in the description below just for those specific to the story mode. The rest will have to be found in the free ride mode where you can complete the collection. You will need to collect the rest of the gangster monthly issues for the trophy Picture Book Connoisseur, the last of the cigarette cards for the trophy Full Set, all the rest of the mystery foxes for the mystery fox domination trophy, and then the rest of the pulp magazines for the ones we mentioned earlier. That will only net you 60 pulp magazines and the lending library trophy requires 80. Well, Free Roam contains 20 black mask pulp magazines exclusive to this mode and that will make up the rest of the pulp magazines. There are also more Free Roam exclusive collectibles like the 5 postcards all found at Bertoni's auto shop located right here. The other exclusive collectibles are the best in the game, the hidden cars. You will get on the trail for finding your first one. These cars are swanky as hell and finding all five gets you the car thief number one trophy. All of these collectibles will be in the video guide down below that is dedicated to free ride and that will be enough to get you the whole story trophy and complete the collection. So where's the platinum? Well, you haven't stolen everything yet. You need to swipe enough cars for your garage. The hidden cars are a good start, but throughout your playthrough of this game, you will want to sit inside the cars found in Lost Heaven, whether they belong to you or not. The story mode will automatically give you 15 cars, and that's enough to unlock the trophy, quite the collection. The rest of the cars you need for your garage, and our final trophy, Motor Museum, include the 5 hidden cars you found earlier, and the ones out in the city just ripe for the taking. If you find yourself short of the 30 total, you can also collect 5 more cars exclusive to the phone booth side missions. For sure, that will be enough to get you to 30 cars to pop the trophy. And if you have followed the guide and collected every trophy, congratulations! You have successfully swiped the original Gangster Platinum Trophy.
Overall, Mafia Definitive Edition is a fantastic remake of a game that slipped by many when it first came out. This game is one of the examples outlining how remakes are so important in the current video game landscape, especially when it comes to adding trophy support. The Platinum Trophy run may be straightforward, but it doesn't devalue it. The original Gangster Plat is a sign that you beat Mafia 1 on its classic difficulty the way it was originally intended. You overcame shootouts with the city's most notorious gangsters, successfully pulled off calculated heists, evaded getting busted by the cops, and won the most infamous race in video games. You cheated, but you still earned that victory. Go steal Mafia's Platinum Trophy if you like a challenge, cause that's exactly what it's gonna give you. With all the tips in this guide and some perseverance, you will go far. Can't wait to continue talking about the series in the future as we leave Lost Heaven and eventually enter Empire Bay in Mafia 2. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this guide really helps you to beat that race and to beat any other parts that you're struggling with in this game because I really love the way they remade this game and they changed certain aspects of it to make the story feel even better than the original was. And I'm always just happy when I can talk about the Mafia series because it is a great one. So I hope you guys get this platinum trophy and I hope you guys like the video. Please let me know down in the comments section if you did and also subscribe to the channel for more Platinum Hunters guides. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.